In this video, we're going to look at LC circuits and how they react at resonant frequency and also above and below resonant frequency. In a prior video, we looked at what was resonant frequency, resonant frequency. And it's basically when XL equals XC, the inductive reactance equals the capacitive reactance. And we come up with this formula. Okay. So what happens at resonant frequency? Well, if XL equals XC, the vectors are gonna be the same length in series right away for XL and XC, because XL points up, XC down. And if they're the same length, what do we do with them? Well, they cancel each other out. Five steps forward, five steps backwards. I went nowhere. And I'm left with a dot. Since these are ohms, does that mean I have no ohms at the circuit source? That's correct. That's what the circuit looks like. It's a theoretical circuit, but that's what it would look like at the source. It would look like a short circuit, no ohms. So how many amps would flow with a short circuit? Theoretically, an infinite number of amps. Whatever is available will flow. So it's again, it's a theoretical circuit, but that's what would happen at resonant frequency if I had no resistance in the circuit. How about parallel? Well, if XL equals XC, we remember that we need to look at currents in a parallel circuit because the vectors represent current. So if the ohms are the same on both branches, wouldn't the current? It's the same voltage pushing down each branch. So the current should be the same on both if the opposition is the same. And so equal length vectors. And if those cancel each other out, I got the dot again, means I've got zero amps. Now, there still are amps flowing here, right? They're flowing back and forward, back and forward. That complementary nature of the capacitor and the inductor, because they need their currents exactly 180 degrees out from each other. So when the capacitor's done with them, it gives them to the inductor, stores them up again, gives them back, right? They just keep circling. You could technically open the circuit here and the two would keep going along. Again, theoretical, if there were no resistance in the circuit, ignoring even the resistance in the wire. But the source would need to kick in zero amps because remember, the source only needs to put in the difference between what the capacitor and the inductor want. And in this case, they're equal, no difference, the source doesn't need to give them any current. So from the perspective of the source, if no current is flowing, how much opposition would there would be? What would my ohms be? That's right, an infinite number of ohms. It would be like an open circuit. No ohms, I mean, no amps would flow from the source. They're just self-contained. So at resonance, purely LC circuits, this one looks like a short circuit, and this one like an open circuit. What happens if I go below resonant frequency? Well, what I need to consider if I'm gonna go below resonant frequency, at resonance, XL equaled XC, right? Now, below, Let's take a look. If the frequency goes down, what happens to XL and XC? Well, XL is directly proportional, multiplying by a smaller number, get a smaller inductive reactance. How about here? Inverse relationship, smaller denominator yields a larger capacitive reactance. So what I did here, since the XL is smaller, I had a smaller XL, smaller quantity. And the XC increased, so I made the XC vector longer. What do we do here? We take the little one away from the big one, 
and I'm left with this amount. So from the circuit source, it looks like a capacitive circuit now because the remaining vector is pointing into capacitive territory. And because I've got a, an appreciable amount of ohms, I could calculate how much current and then go from there. But what happens in the parallel? Because my XL is smaller, that means fewer ohms, less opposition on the inductive branch than there is on the capacitive. Which side will more current flow on? Fewer ohms will allow more current to flow on the inductive branch. The capacitive branch will have less current because it has more ohms, more opposition. Means that my capacitive current vector got smaller. But my inductive current vector, remember in parallel the inductive current points down, the inductive current vector got longer. So I take the small capacitive vector, take it away from the big one, and I'm left with a certain amount of current that the source needs to provide. It needs to provide the difference between the two. And since the difference is down into inductive territory, the circuit thinks we've got an inductive circuit. But the bottom line is when the frequency goes lower, my capacitive vector is longer in series, so the circuit looks more capacitive. And in parallel, it's the inductive vector that's longer, so the circuit appears more inductive. Let's look the other way. If we go above resonant frequency, if we go back to thinking about being at resonant frequency and we want to go above it, at resonance, these two were equal, but now we increase the frequency, what happens to XL and XC? The opposite reaction. XL now increases and XC decreases. So what does that mean in my circuit and if I draw some vectors? If XL is greater, that means my inductive vector in series, the inductive vector points up, that got longer. I take the little capacitive vector, take it away, and I'm left with an inductive vector. So above resonant frequency, the series circuit starts appearing inductive. And above resonant frequency, the parallel circuit, XL is now greater. That means there is less current flowing on the inductor and more current flowing on the capacitor. So the capacitive vector, right? Parallel, capacitive points up. That got longer. I would take the inductive current away from there and I'm left with the source needing to supply more current to the capacitor. The inductor's current dances back and forward, but the source needs to provide the difference between the little vector and the big vector. I should have written that up there. Above resonant frequency, this is the effect. So if we look at what happens here, at resonant frequency, they're equal. This appears like a short circuit. That would appear like an open circuit. Below resonant frequency, the lower vector got longer. And above resonant frequency, the upper vector got bigger. That's the same in both of them. As frequency increases, it gets bigger going up. And really comes down to biggest vector wins. So below resonant frequency, the series appears capacitive. Capacitive reactance. And below resonant frequency, it's the inductive vector, inductive current, so the parallel appears inductive. Above resonant frequency, the parallel appears capacitive, capacitive current pointing up. And above resonant frequency, the series appears inductive. 